Hi, this is John, and welcome to John's Long Box. Today I'm taking a pretty obscure comic. This is Defenders 89, <clears throat> 50 cents, 1980. Okay, and here we have the team of, of Defenders. It was a lesser known DC comic, and it was lesser known for a reason. It wasn't that good. There was some, you know, good issues, but overall the whole series, I'd give it a C. Okay, so uh, here we have uh, the, the characters in this issue. We got Kyle... Uh, Richmond, that's Nighthawk, Bruce Banner the Hulk, Patsy Walker, Hellcat, and that's Valkyrie. She's she's complicated. Doesn't she look like just like Tessa Thompson? It's amazing how much she looks like Tessa Thompson. <coughs> and here we have uh, a nicely colored co uh, uh, comic. This is the artist is uh, Mike Nasser and Joe Rubenstein. I can't tell you anything about either one of them too much. I don't, I don't, I'm not too familiar with either one of them that much. But uh, this is came out under the uh, the Jim Shooty years, which I'm always saying were the best years of comics. Well, ev even the best years of comics didn't uh, always fire on all cylinders. But here, here we're going to look at the, uh, the opening page. Ah, oh, jeez, I can't get the Trans Am muscle cars. This comic's in remarkably good condition. Oh, okay, so let me tell you a little reason why I'm picking this comic. I must be feeling nostalgic now because uh, uh, my, I used to, my, my, my mother would go to my aunt's house, her sister's house, and uh, when we got there, there was nothing to do. All, all of my cousins in that particular house were a lot older than me and they were out. So I would just go there and I had nothing to do. So I would either bring comic books with me or, or watch TV. And, uh, and the, this particular trip, I think I didn't bring any comic books with me. So, and uh, back then there wasn't cable and everything like that. So it was just, you know, network TV and there's nothing on. I think my father was watching, you know, some some boring show to me that that he liked. So my my cousin, who was basically an adult at the time, I I don't know how old I was, but uh, she was like in her twenties. So she was like, "Come on, let's go, let's go to the store. I'll buy you a comic book." So. That was music to my ears. I jump up, and we walk down the store, and we go to like a stationery store and look at the spinner rack. And there's this comic, Daredevil '89. Now this comic was a, was legendary in, in my circle, <laughs> so my eyes lit up, and I didn't want to explain why I wanted it so much. So this was actually the first Defenders comic I ever bought, not the first Defenders comic I ever read, or or owned. Somehow I had like. A, f a few issues of Defenders, but I don't remember ever buying them. I think people gave them to me, and sometimes back then people would read comics and then just give them away when they were done. So I had some Defenders comics, but uh, this was the first one. And you know, I didn't buy it; my cousin bought it for me. But this was the first one I saw, I wanted, I got. So I'll explain why when it happens. But my eyes lit up. But let me tell you some some more backstory. I used to walk home from school with my friends, and like we did, always did. With eventually we would talk about comic books and there was a bunch of older kids and when I say older I'm talking like three years older but that that's a big deal when, you, when you're in like third fourth grade and this kid was we used to call him fat kid Rogers and you know not to his face of course but his, his name was Rogers and he was fat so he was fat kid Rogers and he was kind of a jerk so I don't feel bad not even today but he was a big comic book geek and he was a couple of years older than us so of course, we were like, ooh, comic books, you know, tell us about your knowledge. And he had, as far as we knew, a vast, I've never seen it, but he always talked about his comic book collection. So we were impressed. So he's telling us, you got to get a, a, a Defenders 89. And he told us why. And we were like, oh my God, we got to get it. We got to get it. So I was always on the look for this comic. I didn't tell you why yet. I will later when, when, I, when I show you. So I was like, we, I got to get this comic. I got to get this comic. So when my cousin walked me to the uh, candy store, the stationery store, and I saw it, I was like, oh, my God. Oh, she's going to know I want this comic. She's going to know why. So I had to be quiet, calm down, and she bought me the comic and then went and read it. So let's open up why this is, this was a sought-after comic that I had to be quiet about. Okay, so... Look! Look at the look at this uh, script. David Anthony Kraft co-plotting with Ed Hannigan. So I, those two guys I don't really know too well. Uh, D. Alvers Letting, George Russo's coloring. Alan Mil that Al Milgram, another great great editor. Another guy who wasn't afraid to take risks. Mark Gruenwald, ideas and continuity in Stephen Grant. 
and Jim Shooter, contributing editor in chief. So this comic was like all over the place, but this is what I do like. Don Perlin and Pablo Marcos. This was the same art team that did that Ghost Rider with the creepy little kid. So, so this, you know, just a, 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 a great artist that, that doesn't get the accolades he's deserved. So the Defenders are coming home from their last battle, and there's, there's Valkyrie in her, her, her costume. This was like her superhero costume, carrying banner, and that's Patsy Walker Hellcat. Uh, believe it or not, she's one of Marvel's original comic book characters. In in the in the fifties, there was a comic book called Patsy Walker Model, and of course, it was a comic aimed at girls about modeling, and and uh, it was a big deal. It was like a competitor to Archie and stuff like that. And when they reintroduced ah, this comic, doesn't want to stay open. When they reintroduced reintroduced her into into like the Marvel line in in the you know the, that we have today. They said that the Patsy Walker model comics were was written by her mother, based on her. So she's like the real person that the comic book character was was, was based on. See, so you know her mother was living vicariously through the adventures of her daughter Patsy, and, but she grew up to be a model. So in her secret identity of Patsy Walker, she's Patsy Walker model, and then she puts on this Hellcat costume and becomes the Hellcat. So she's like an acrobatic Avenger uh, hero with, you know, doesn't really have that many powers or anything, or, or any powers whatsoever. And then she marries uh, Damien Hellstrom, son of Satan. So we have Hellcat and Damien Hellstrom are married. I, I don't know if they're married or divorced at this point. But look at this old 1950s British gentleman coming out of the building, you know, checking out Millie Model in the skin-tight spandex, you know. My goodness, this woman's lip thing has certainly got out of her hand. That's, that's not how I got dates when I was a girl. <laughs> Let's look at the indicia. 1980. Yeah, so it is 1980, even though it said it on the cover, so I kind of knew that. So, boring, 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 boring. So, boring, 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 boring. But did you see it? Did you see it? So, what's going on now is Kyle Richmond's lawyer is telling... He's being serviced by the IRS, and they're confiscating all of the stuff for, for back taxes. So that's the premise of this issue. The 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 government is taking Kyle Rich. Kyle Richman was like the, the rich billionaire superhero. He was a blatant ripoff of, of Batman. So he, you know, Nighthawk was was Marvel's version of Batman, and he never really caught on. Never really became a big deal. And now the the IRS has taken all of his stuff. And what is that rabbit selling? Yes. The word shit got past the DC editors and the Comics Code Authority. So here we have on the TV a cartoon rabbit selling a box of shit. <laughs> so this became, oh, we got to get it. We got to get it. It's the first time there was a dirty word in a Marvel comic. We got to get it. So I'm thinking my cousin <laughs> Kathleen is going to notice why I want this comic book. She <laughs> she just was like, let's get out of the house, buy this kid something. So I... You know, this comic became legend. And that's it. That's the reason. The rest of this comic, who cares? There's the reason I wanted to talk about this comic. <laughs> so, IRS, going to take the stuff. Here come the superheroes. Kind of coloring the background. It's no big big deal. Don Perlin is great with the human form and figures, though. He, and there's Kyle Richmond. Boom, 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 moping around. So, Patsy... So now the phone rings, he answers it. He, of course, thinks it's his lawyers. What what other bad news do I have? And he answers the phone. Because pa Patsy Richmond has been living at a, at a at Kyle Richmond's mansion. All the defenders have been. That's that's been their that, you know, their like the Avengers mansion. That's been their headquarters for for a, a while in the comics. So your your mother died. So oh she heard a mother used to fight all the time. They they had a, a tempestuous relationship. So She's sad because she never got to say goodbye. She never got to make it up to her. So uh, I wonder who that man is she's carrying. So Valkyrie's still carrying unconscious Bruce Banner. So, you know, let's go. Let's go uh, Go sort out your mother's stuff. This is clear. This is Dr. Strange's uh, uh, disciple, love interest, I, I think later wife. So they're, they're all commiserating, you know, helping 
you know, like I said, she, she her, and her mother used to fight, but that doesn't mean she wanted her dead. It, you know, it's a complicated relationship. There's Bruce Banner wearing some clothes given to him by Kyle Richmond. Like I said, Hellcat visited Valkyrie. Blah, 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 blah. So here they are. Uh, she's going to break a spell that, that Valkyrie's been under, and voila, her, her original costume appears. I don't know why. So they're, they're resetting the status quo. So what do they do? They hire a lawyer. Who's the lawyer? Matt Murdock. Because in comic books, if you're a scientist, you're every type of scientist. And if you're a lawyer, you're every type of lawyer. That's just the way it is in comic books. So, so Matt Murdock is going to help him with the IRS troubles. Because if you're a lawyer in a comic book, you're every type of lawyer. So he can't read the notice of uh, eviction. So he puts his hand on it. And with his super senses, he can actually feel the ink. So he could read it like that. Almost like everything becomes Braille. And then the Fem Force attacks. Because you don't want the Fem Force attacking you. So the Fem Force, all these women landing on the building is Hulk so Daredevil's got to go put the beat down on these the femme force so I, I, I do love the way he, he, he draw again this comic is no great shakes they're throwing stuff he dacooms just uh, Don Perla you know just a, just look at the I don't know I just feel like the, the people have mass they have weight they have a uh, you know gravity's affected them and but look at the women women look strong you know they, they look like women you know that curves and you know kind of sexy but look they're not waifs look look at them they, they look like like if they were to punch you it would, it would hurt so she chucks them right in the face kicks them and dog pile on daredevil a lot of people some people would pay a lot of money for that but not daredevil he he doesn't want to get swacked by by her chud right nice booty and uh, no sound effect here. What sound effect would work there? I don't know. So she pulls a gun on Daredevil. And do you really care about the story? I don't. I just wanted to point out a dirty word. So he gets shot right in the chest. Probably kill you. From force to Mandrill. Ah, oh, that's right. Mandrill is... <laughs> there he is right there. He's... I forget if he's a human who's mutated into an ape or an ape is mutated into a human. But... uh. He's just like this monkey-headed guy, and his power is he can mind-control women. So he's this creepy weirdo villain with, with a group of, of women, and he always calls them the Femme Force. So there, here they are, take a Daredevil. Daredevil, turns out later it's a tranquilizer. It's art. That Guns don't go shh. So they take a Daredevil away. Chapter 2, Suburban Nightmare. So here we are at, at a Dorothy Walker's grave, 1919-1980. Uh, dates are really subjective and, 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 and weird in in, uh, in comic book world. So uh, take that with a grain of salt. You know, they, they always say that comic books are in like a sliding scale. So they're paying their respects. And, oh, Tales from Out of the... This, I always like these. They show the old... Co Heck, Jekyll and Mighty Mouse, Tom and Jerry Comedy Show, Bugs Bunny Roadrunner. Fat Al I wonder why Bill Cosby's Fat Albert not on TV anymore. Can anybody offer up any suggestions why uh, Bill Cosby's Fat Albert show with the Brown Hornet wouldn't be on TV anymore? The Drac Pack. The Drac Pack. <laughs> that's our, the all-new Popeye Hour, Tarzan the Lone Ranger. I've seen this ad before. And that's what every kid wants is 30 minutes of news on a Saturday morning. And they wonder why it failed. So now they're in Pleasant Valley Sunday, whatever wherever it is uh, that uh, that uh, Patsy Walker grew up. So that this is someplace in New Jersey, if I remember. So uh, they they're getting the keys to a uh, Dorothy Dorothy Walker's house. There's the Walker residence. So here it is. This is the new Defenders, and there's the St Cedar Street, Hartville Street. So this is where they're moving after a nice Montclair, New Jersey. Glenridge Hospital. So I wonder if this is real. I'm, I, I don't know. Here's a splash page that's kind of worthless, if you ask me. But uh, this is where the Defenders are going to be located now from, from this nice suburban little home. Some ads. Empire Strikes Back. Imperial Guard cap. Rebel Troopers caps. So here we go. We're looking in. And uh, remember, Patsy Walker's mother was like writing fashion stuff, so there's all this stuff. Who cares? And now she's going back 
you remember when her mom was making the comic book and you know modeling after her and she's a little little and, and the, they're making her so that she was a tomboy so her mom was making her like this perfect little girl who loved dresses and stuff like that meanwhile she's a little tom girl well i guess if you would be a tom girl if you grew up to be a you know ass kicking superhero so stories about her mom fighting then she her first marriage Buzz Baxter. Buzz Baxter was, was a character in that comic book, too, that was like, a, you know, Archie and Betty and Veronica. Will they get married? Will they not get married? And then, so in real life, so his model left her a real Buzz Baxter. So they got married, and that, that ended in divorce. And I think this, no, this, no, she she's, and then with the Avengers, I found that costume belonging to. So the cat was Grant Greer. And I when I when I did the Night Nurse uh, video, I talked about uh, Grant Greer. Grant Greer was a uh, was a comic book that only lasted four issues. That uh, Marvel, you know, they tried to uh, market some comics towards towards girls. They had a predominantly male audience, so they made a uh, Night Nurse, uh, the Cat. Oh, and I can't I can't remember what else they made, but they, they were marketed towards women. And they all failed. The, 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 but the, the cat was really a mess. Every issue was like a different team. There was just no focus. It was a mess. But she got this... Grant Greer uh, met this race of like cat people. And they gave her this costume that gave her cat powers. And then Grant Greer eventually mutated into, into Tigra. And the costume was ne necessary. So Patsy Walker took that costume and took the name Hellcat instead of just the cat. So they're all eating. You know, and... Uh, is the Hulk in a purple suit? Because you got to wear a purple suit. So, what's going on here? I don't know. Hulk, this guy's kicking him in the chest. Chuff turns into Hulk, wrecks his uh, suit. Because you got to Hulk out once, once an issue. And he goes into the store. And pretty cool looking. Pretty powerful looking. He looks like apish. And Valkyrie goes uh, food shopping and stops a robbery. Spins her sword around like Thor spins his hammer around. Hulk smash it's just who cares I'll, I'll and then Hulk buys all the cans of beans that was like a running joke that Hulk likes beans so here he goes she's ringing up all the cans of beans he doesn't have any money so basically he just robs the place he's about $15 short so what he's a hero he deserves it after stopping the robbery but by the way who are you gonna tell him he's short so the Hulk freaking robs the place but they make a note to say that Patsy Walker sends the the money to the to the store to make up for it. So here they are, all the defenders <laughs> eating beans because the Hulk likes beans. Turn off the TV. And there's Kyle Richmond using his Nighthawk wings. He can fly. That's like one up on Batman. He can actually fly. He's fixing the uh, the aerial. So here's the the uh, here, Randy Evans. Here's the defenders dialogue with the letters page, and here's the checklist. So Marvel's slate of, of comics is is getting bigger from its low point in like what 1977. Terry McNeil. Wade Gringer, I don't recognize any of these people. And let's see if Reed Richards is a proper superhero. He's taking the fantastic car. Uh, power of gold. So I think that foreshadows. Yeah, golden Twinkies. Reed, you know how to win. Twinkies are so much better than fruit pies. Look at that guy. Look, he defeated them with the power of lovely Twinkies. I actually ate a Twinkie today in honor of Reed Richards. So the Hulk ate so many people. To me, I always thought like, the Hulk is a manifestation of rage, so if he's fallen asleep, he must be calm. He, you never should see a sleeping Hulk. He should turn back into Banner. But maybe the transformation has a minimum time range. I don't know. But I don't write the I don't write the the Hulk. So here's they're all settling in in rooms. He's all upset because he lost his mansion, wouldn't you? Uh, what's going on? I don't even know. Falls asleep. They have a housekeeper now. That's going to be their Alfred. And Daredevil wakes up trapped in a bank vault as captured by the Femme Force and Mandrill. So, it's a crummy comic. Overall, that's the Defenders. But this, this is, you know, they would, the last issue was a, was a big epic battle. The next issue, we start to battle. So sometimes every couple of issues, they would have like a reset the status quo comic. Uh, you know, a little slow down the pace comic. So, I bought this comic and I was really disappointed. I got it because of the, the curse word in it. And, uh, I, I didn't touch Defenders again for a long time after this. It wasn't until till college, really. I, I started uh, dating a woman who owned a comic book store. And uh, 
she gave me like a, a, a pile of Defenders comics. She's like, here, get these out of the, out of the store. So I, I, I got like almost a full run from her and I've since uh, filled in with all the issues and sat down and then I read all the Defenders comics in their entirety and uh, I was not impressed. So there you go. <laughs> this is more for nostalgia and I, it was so built up in my mind. Fat Kid Rogers, like, you got to get Defenders 89. Uh, it's a big deal, you know. Uh, a little cartoon rabbit <laughs> holding up the box. So let's end this comic in honor of Fat Kid Rogers. You are a big pile of 